Reji, uh, after seeing your videos uh, uh, from some time, I feel that we need to have that uh, uh, faith and courage to walk on the path of the truth. Uh, but after seeing that, uh, I also saw in one of the re videos like like that in that insecurity, like uh, whatever future planning is, right? It's treated as uh, insecurity. But if you see uh, my life, like uh, I'm, I'm working now, but after some time, definitely, uh, as I said, there'll be no pension for us. So definitely, I need to plan whatever the expenditure after my uh, retirement. So in that case, somewhere I feel guilt that, like, yeah, I'm not having complete faith or uh, guts to walk on the path of the truth. That feels guilty on myself. So is that I am doing mistake saving the, the money? The question is not that you are planning. The question is what are you planning for? What are you planning for? Are you planning to take care of your usual expenses? That amounts to nothing. Or are you trying to take care of your usual expenses so that you can dedicate yourself to something lofty? These are two very different things. I am saving for old age. Hmm? Statement one. I am saving for old age so that I can take care of my expenses. The thing is, I need to provide food and other logistics to the soldiers. Not because they have stomachs, but because they have weapons. Feeding the stomachs means nothing. But feeding the stomachs of those who are fighting for the right thing means everything. So feed not their stomachs but their weapons. What are you planning for? You know? And what are you planning for depends on the center you are coming from. If your entire life is dedicated only to your own little comforts and securities and insecurities and this and that and trivia, then you will plan for trivia. And if you have something a bit bigger, problems in your life, then you will plan for that. And obviously you cannot plan for the unthinkable one. But you can plan for yourself at least. You may not be able to plan out the course of your journey. But surely you know that you will be journeying for long. So you can plan to keep reasonable amount of supplies with you. You understand the difference? I do not know from where comes this notion that planning per se is wrong or spiritually unacceptable. What does spirituality have to do with declaring any one aspect of mental activity as right or wrong. In spirituality, the right center is right and the wrong center is wrong. There is only one right and there is only one wrong. Whatever you therefore do from the right center is right, including planning. Whatever you do from the wrong center is wrong, including Lack of planning. Just because you don't plan, you don't become a monk or a saint. 
you might be a loafer or a drunkard of the worst kind who does not even have the brains to plan so the mere absence of planning is no proof of spiritual upliftment it may as well point towards mental degeneracy you don't even have the intellect to plan you don't even have the discipline to plan therefore you are not planning what's spiritual about all this planning requires subtle faculties of the mind right you have to look at resources you have to look at inflows you have to look at outflows you have to peep into the future somebody whose brains are eaten out won't be able to plan so remember this the very absence of one thing or the very presence of another thing is no guarantee of anything spiritual all i'll always ask is what is the place you are coming from for what is this what is your center ultimately what is it that you want that's the difference between usual morality social standards and spirituality that's why spirituality is so fantastic and so dangerous it is fantastic because it does not give you any rules and it is scary because it does not give you any rules most people require rules as crutches to live by right we we sometimes complain that rules limit us that rules are like boundaries or bondages is not the fact if you take away rules from most people they'll complain because they live by rules the average person if he gets up one particular morning and has not been instructed to do something will find himself quite uncomfortable as some people are on weekends because on the weekdays everything is rule bound for you and somebody has set the rules so you are okay i have to reach the office by such time or i have to be in my shop at such time i have to be back by such time are you getting it so we require boundaries and rules and and the open sky appears tempting and inviting but it is actually very scary to most people what do i do now with my life i have just woken up what do i do now and you know by the way that's a principal challenge in entrepreneurship what do i do now i have just woken up nobody to guide me nobody to impose anything on me and that's such a problem there is nobody to impose anything on me no boss what to do now ha huh? in spirituality everything is allowed provided it is coming from the right place therefore the common intellect often feels confounded how come such a spiritual person is doing such a thing he is doing such a thing because that's the thing to be done from the right place and that's why the biographies the stories of the saints are so distorted by the institutions churches priests and folklore the common public as well because the real lives of the really spiritual people contain so much that would be morally unacceptable to us and we'll say but if he was a saint why was doing all these things because all these things are needed to be done if you are a saint only a saint can do those things the common man cannot so what do we do then we delete those portions from their lives are you getting it yes. so there is no spiritual sanction plan and plan with spiritual impunity 
no god is going to punish you for planning <laughs> yes but if you live a godless life that is a punishment in itself get the difference yeah. and the, a very good example is the buddha himself shakyamuni buddha the level of organization and foresight and planning he displayed is utterly awesome hmm? by standards of management theory he was a very very good manager and there would have been no buddhism around us had he not been such a great manager buddhism today is is with us as much due to the management skills of buddha as due to the soundness of his message but we emphasize only one thing what oh he is buddha you know, aura and these things all the gods came and they showered petals on him because he got enlightened that's not the way it happens there is a lot of work involved there and we do not want to talk of it because work tires us work scares us so we talk only of those things in which there is no work involved right like sitting under a tree and suddenly getting enlightened talk <laughs> It's a, it's a tough thing for tough people you have to work really really hard and not merely internally you have to work hard externally as well with your limbs as well it involves that as well and for long periods hmm?